Hi friends, welcome back to the Java lesson. In this session, we will discuss about the string handling. A lot of questions arises in interview based on it. So I felt that I should talk about string handling. This is the first part in which I will talk about the number one, what is string? Number two, different classes available for it. And the number three, different ways to create string objects. That is, the constructors of a string class. At the end of this series, I will include most possible interview questions based on string handling with the solution. So please watch all the videos of this series. I am adding a link of previous and next video on the screen so that you will easily find them. So let us begin. So the widely used objects in Java are strings. So it is necessary for all Java beginners to learn string handling in depth. Strings are nothing but sequence of characters. The cache sequence interface is used to represent sequence of characters. This interface is implemented by string, string buffer and the string builder classes. So we have three different classes to create string objects. However, the string class is widely used for string handling. The string class implements three different interfaces. The number one is serializable, the number two is comparable, and the number three is, as you know, cache sequence. So let us see the different ways to create object of a string class. So generally, string is a sequence of characters but in java a string is an object that represents a sequence of characters the java.lang.string class is used to create a string object there are two ways to create a string object the number one is by using string literal and the next one is by using a new keyword let us see first about string literals let us create a new java program uh, with the help of notepad so let us create a class uh, abc with the main method so string literals are just a sequence of character enclosed in a inverted com so let us create a string object with the help of a string literal string str1 is equal to a e if you want to display, just call the system.out.printer method to print this one. Let us check it, compile, and then execute. So you have a string literal on the screen. When we create string literals, they are stored in a separate pool called string pool. And each time JVM first checks, the pool for existing strings with same sequence of characters. If the string exists in the pool, the JVM returns the reference of same string object and it is easily tested using hash code. So let us check it. So let us create one more uh, string object with the help of string literal and the same sequence of characters so if you will try to print the string 2 we will also have the same result on the console so it looks that there is two different objects str1 and str2 uh, having having a string object with the content abc but actually both the variables are referring to the same object there is a single object in the string pool which is referred by both str1 and str2 and if you want to see is it true or not so just call the hash code method on both the reference variable and if you don't know about hash code then please go through the previous video that is shown on the screen and uh, you will find the good explanation of hash code method so let us check hash code of both the reference actually hash code is nothing but an integer value uh, that represents each one object uniquely so let us display 
by executing the program and you will see that both the reference variable has same hash code however if you will create a separate variable with different sequence of characters you will find that its hash code is different you can see the third one variable has different hash code because its sequence of character is different that means if we will create string object with the help of uh, string literals the JVM check that whether there is any uh, pre-existing object with the same sequence character is available or not in the string pool so if the string pool holds object with same sequence of character it returns the reference of same object and that is why the str1 and str2 both have same hash code as displayed here 64578 for both the variables however I have changed the sequence of character by capital and a small letter the str3 has different hash code so it's clear that if there is multiple string literal objects are created by the programmer if the same sequence of character is repeating no new object will be created in the string pool the reference of pre-existing object will be returned back in all those cases so here we have discussed about string literals to use in creating a string object now it's time to know about using new keyword let us go the number one is having no argument that is no argumented constructor is available for string class and it will create a string object with nothing in it so let us see so let us go with new keyword and the constructor i am using is a no argumented constructor so let us see what the result it will display there is nothing in this object there is no content in as well the next one constructor is having a parameter as java.lang.string so it's so easy to create an object of a string class by using a string object uh, either a sequence of character enclosed in a inverted comma or another string object so let us create an object with the second one constructor we can pass a string literal here to create a string object. Let us compile and run the program to see the output. And even since we have an object S1 as a string object, we can create a string object using new keyword that means calling constructor and passing another string object. So either by passing a string literal or a string object we can create a new string of and you can see the result here more the string object has content the next one is a string constructor with parameter as character array so let us see it so let us create a string object with the help of character array so first we will create a character array let us create object string as 3 with the help of character array let us see the result the string for, from char array is once again abc what i did i had created a character array with three characters a b and c so in this way i have created a new string object by passing the characters array and so the result is once again having the same content as previous so this is also a way to create a string object by passing characters array as parameter in the constructor string class next one with char array 
and two integer parameters. So let us create another string object uh, with the help of the new one constructor which has three parameters. The first one is character array, the next one is uh, index and the last one also is an integer. So let us check what the result will be for displaying the string object S4. So it displays B. Why? The first integer shows the index of the character and the next one shows the number of characters to pick. So from 1th index, one character is to picked up. So as for results B, if I enter 2 for second parameter, it will result B and C. The beginning index is 1 and the number of character is 2. Let us check it. Is it okay? Now what will happen if I will put 3 because from 1th index there is no 3 character. There is only 2 characters. So what will happen if I will add 3? It will show an exception. String index out of bounds exception. So you must take care when passing integer as parameter. So if you want to have all the characters then 0, 0 for 0 index and 3 for number of characters to pick up. So it will say and display all the three characters. Is it okay? Int array with two int parameters. So let us create a int array to see this constructor's output. Let us see the result. It gives the result B. What happened? We have entered 65, 66 and 67. But the ask 5 gives me the result B. So let us comment here something. Recompile. Yes, really S5 is giving the output B. So from where B comes? We have given enter we have entered 65, 66 and 67. So actually the B is having a ASCII code of 66. Now uh, if I will put here 2 then it will begin from 1th index and pick two characters 66 is B and 67 is C. So let us see the output. So it has the same concept as the character array but instead of uh, characters we are keeping integer numbers and the concept are same. If, if I want to get all the characters then start from B0 and the length of the array. Is it okay? Byte array as a parameters. The constructor using byte array is same as using int array. Let us create a byte array and a string object. So we have a new string object S6 with the same result. A, B, C, where 65 represents character A, 66 the character B, and the 67 the character C. So after passing the byte array, it will create a string object with three characters A, B, C. So let us check it. So S6 is also A, B, C. Byte array with one integer as parameter. Let us create a new string object as 7 by passing byte array and integer. Let us see the result. Let us see 
das kommt bei. So this constructor is now deprecated as shown on the uh, screen. So let us uh, go with the next one constructor. Byte array with two integer parameters. As you see that a uh, constructor with byte array and a single parameter is deprecated. When one more constructor is there with two integer parameters with byte array. Here the concept is same. This is the beginning index and this is the number of characters. So it will work like the same as integer array with two integer parameters or character array with two integer parameters. Let us check. So we see here that S7 is equal to B. S7 displays the value B. This means uh, 1 is the 1th index and 1 is the this one is the number of character to pick up. So to check, I'm changing the value to and let us recompile. The same BC. So the byte array with integer parameter is working same as int array uh, to integer parameter and character with two integer parameter. Mm -hmm.